Okay, this is telling me that I'm lying. So, I won't say anything exciting for five seconds or so. <laughs> because uh, sometimes the very beginning is cut off. But, um, it's going to be exciting. Because we're working with colour today. And uh, this is the third in the portrait drawing series. So, you know, we've been drawing, but we've been drawing in monotone so far. So now we're talking about colour. Now, this isn't a drawing. This is uh, why I had uh, none of my pencils paired today. I brought in coloured pencils and, um, you know, any medium, if you want to draw along any medium, that you have is fine, any drawing medium. Uh, I'll supply the reference to draw from. But uh, if you don't want to, if you don't feel like drawing, that's fine too. You might just put your feet up and have a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever you like and watch. Uh, this isn't a drawing. This is what has me late. I'm not pairing my pencils because I'm obsessed with these new uh, jelly gouache paints I got. And um, I swatched them all out on this bonus live stream that we did during the week. But, you know, I'm glad I did that live stream, actually, because I think when something exciting happens in any, in your art practice anywhere, share the excitement and tell people you're excited about it, you know. So um, that was fun. So I worked it up on this sketch, you see. So this is a portrait sketch, so it is relevant, you know. And that's um, one done in pen. I didn't do that on the live stream. Um, but I wanted to work up a painting from that. And there is a painting in a different medium on the um, main upload tab of the same person. So it's interesting to look at things in different media, but it is um, pencils today because I had a little poll during the week and I don't have, you know, millions of subscribers like some of the huge channels. So, you know, I run a poll and if anybody expresses an opinion in it, <laughs> you know, I go, oh, OK, you know, it might not be like a very wide poll of people, but um, somebody wanted... Uh, Somebody wanted, uh, I said, look, would you prefer me to talk about coloured pencils and work mostly in coloured pencils for this uh, colour portrait drawing session? Or uh, would you like me to work in felt pens? Because I have these kind of, these are really popular these days and they're good, you know. These are a water soluble dual point felt pen and they um they behave not unlike watercolors because you know you can draw with them and then uh, you can spread the color around a little bit and they've got a thin end and thick end so they can be good too although the range of colors you'd have to get a set that has you know the skin colors that you want and a lot of the colors in here aren't wildly relevant like I have I actually picked out one skin color um I don't know where I put it now that's another question but there it is there um as being the the nearest to a skin color that I had and I really only had kind of one skin color you know so it's uh gonna be mostly felt pens but you know I might they might come into it later just because to cover a large area Say I was going to do this in pencil, right, in coloured pencil. Uh, that's very labour intensive in coloured pencil to have all your white paper gone. And <clears throat> David Hockney, the person whose portrait we're doing today, and the reference material for that is linked in the description. And if you just want to see a quick look at what the guy looks like, um, if you hop over to my community tab, the last thing I posted is the reference picture of him, which is very bad quality, but there's a video link as well. And the video, which is linked to under this description as well, of this video, the video has shots of him at this ex ex exhibition, it's a big exhibition, um, Flash Expo. And... Um, 
it's an annual exhibition, I think. Some of them are only every four years, but I think this one is an annual one. And it's really like, you know, top painters and everything are featured in that, but uh, they're interviewing them in it, in the gallery. So it's not only interesting to see his work in the gallery, but um, he's in this outfit and everything. The reference photo we're using is from that exhibition, you know? So he's wearing the same clothing and everything. So this is great because we have not just a still image of him, um, but we also have video where he's moving a little bit so we can see his face from different angles, which is great. Uh, it's the next best thing to have in a sitter, you know. So, um, and this this uh, portrait here, um, that was done for, from various video sources mixed with um, still sources. So I had to work with what I had on then um, make up a lot of things in terms of colours and everything. So it's not actually kind of super derivative of some of the stuff that I was working from, except to find out what the structure or facial features were. So when you're doing portrait painting, it, what I'm trying to point out <laughs> in my long-winded way is that you're not, say you've got a, you're doing somebody from this angle, if you have any other references of them from a different angle, make use of those as well, because uh, something like a nose or shape of eyes, uh, people's eyes can be set in further than other people's eyes or cheekbones sticking out further. And uh, I'll be probably referring later in the video, I noticed this about David Hockney, that from the front, you wouldn't know this, but you kind of, you look at him from the front and, I'm sort of going, I don't understand uh, what plane his chin is on in relation to his nose and everything, and, which sounds like a weird thing to say, but not for a painter, you know. <laughs> so um, when I went over to that video, um, all became clear because he, he has an unusual face in so far as, like if we're just talking about the average kind of thing, you know deviating from the average slightly in that um, his nose and his chin are kind of on this kind of almost the same plane nearly compared to some people. And it's very interesting. Um, but I wouldn't have known that, but it does solve some of the problems of looking at him from the front understanding if you go and look at him from the side or different angle. Um, and look what else I have here because this uh, picture, because I was working on it this morning, couldn't drag myself away, and I'm very, very nearly finished. I have a few little bits and bobs to do around the place to sort of make it pop more, um, but I'm very nearly finished, and I will post the finished one of that up um, this afternoon on the community tab, as has become a tradition. But I was going to continue painting in this sketch pad, but I don't think this is dry enough for me to handle it. So I'm going to put that aside. And this allows me to do another unboxing because we did our jelly gouache unboxing. So this is kind of an unboxing here because this arrived this morning, or should I say, I chased the postman to get it <laughs> because the way it was delivered, they couldn't find the house. And I had dreadful difficulty getting delivered, but eventually managed to, well, find the delivery man sitting in the van <laughs> and say, Oh, what's your name, Paul? <laughs> and I found him and I got my delivery. <laughs> I really wanted my delivery. So um, it's a sketch pad, and I'm going to draw David Hockney in this because. I could use this big sheet, but um, if this is nice size and everything, I might use it on this live stream just to test it out. Uh, ooh, so I'm comparing it, right? I'm com going to do a comparison between this and this is actually, um, is it Aldi or Lidl? Which one is it? I'm not sure which one it is. But it's one of these supermarkets. It's United Office, whichever does United Office products. Um, Aldi or Little, it doesn't say which it is. Little or Lidl, I should say, really. Um, 
this was uh, I got three notebooks for I think it was about six quid, two smaller ones on that one. And, uh, you know, it's it's sturdy and it's kind of waterproof. It's getting slightly grubby already, but, you know, it's um pretty good. But I noticed when I was doing the um, gouache on it with my new jelly gouache, um, that's just to protect the edges of the page from seepage through to other pages, that the pages are very thin paper. And I wasn't sure how the gouache would handle it. You know, it's not great. It could have been thicker paper. So I'm wondering whether this one has any better paper or what. Yeah, it's a good bit thicker. So that would have been um, the better option for painting in gouache. It's a different size. See, that's not a... This one that I got from Needles isn't really a sketch pad as such. It's a blank notepad. So for some reason, they've decided to do it in a non-standard size. But is this one? Uh, that This one is a standard size, I think. Five by one by eight by 8.3 inches, 13 by 21, which is a, what is it, A5? Is that an A5 size? So this is another Chinese product, like the, the jelly gouache, but this came in at under 10 euros, which um, I thought was okay because Look what happens on this. You've got a little tab there that you can stick a couple of pencils in when you go out in the field. It's got a hard cover and it's got this elastic -y thing, which I like because it doesn't get bashed around. So let's christen it today with pictures of Hockney. So um, I hope you forgive me for... Uh, spending time, probably going to be spending some time pairing pencils as well as everything else. <laughs> um, because you know, I should have done all that first, shouldn't I? But I didn't because I didn't want to stop painting. And uh, my jelly washers so far are working out great because, um. I'll start from this page. I'll leave a blank page. Oh, this has the usual thing going. The first two pages don't behave properly. I find that in sketch pad sometimes. The cheaper ones, the better ones don't do it. That these, the inner page is glued to the second inner page. So it misbehaves slightly in those first two pages, which is irritating, I have to say. Um, and very relevant if you're doing uh painting because the other sketch pad I had the, the cheaper one the paper was so thin in it that with this um a little bit um uneven I actually poked a hole in it when I was doing swatch the other day so these little tiny things they make a huge difference you know uh now I want to waste that down and make sure it's in shot. I mean, you know, I could have. You don't have to do it in sketch pad. But this is going to be a sketch pad that I do little kind of sketches that I'm not that precious about, right? I, I want to keep the sketch book, a book, you know. And I have numerous sketch pads around. I have sketch pad. I have then backup sketch pad. I have sketch pads in different sizes. All for different purposes. I pair while I'm talking to you. But um, it's uh, it's good to do things in sketch pads that you're not con uh, you're not really considering finished pieces as such. Although that one that I did, that portrait that I did that I showed you at the beginning. Um, that's working out like a finished piece. I just didn't realise it was going to look that finished, you know. So um, you still want to look at things afterwards, you see. But with a sketch pad, you don't worry if you have pages that don't work out right or anything, you know, because every page is not a work of art. Although, you know, if you get really good at this, um, 
it's going to start working out better. And look, at here's something I often do at the start. Pull the new sketch pad, and that is dirty it up a bit. So there's my black pencil. And I want to show you something about this pencil. It's not actually a black, black. I just grabbed whatever pencils I had. Let's see, this is, what color is this? Oh, it is black, ivory black. I want to show you something about these pencils. That, uh, I like showing you materials, you see. So, oh my God, I'm an hour late. <laughs> I thought it was two o'clock, it's saying three. Your clocks didn't go back around, did they? Oh no, sorry, that's the... <laughs> I did see my own. That's how long I've been on. 15 or something. <laughs> so that meant like 3 o'clock. So look at this. Isn't that nice? So that is a watercolour pencil. See? So you can make those kind of marks. Or that. And it, it's pretty decent when you use it as a watercolour. You know, it just blob around and it's lovely. So I... I uh, used to absolutely adore these pencils. Um, I used to use them a lot in um, life drawing classes. When I went to life drawing classes, my favourite thing for, go for bringing to a life drawing class was these watercolour pencils or Conte chalks, which you could get in a range of very nice skin tones separately. In I had one particular shop that I used to go to get those. Um, it depends on what kind of art shops you have near near you. Um, obviously, but these were Derwent, and a lot of the stuff I'm using, I find Derwent turning up an awful lot. So probably they're, or you know, I'm in Ireland. Probably they're one of the major brands in Ireland, and they're an English brand, I think. But um, you know, watercolor pencils—that's what they are, and. Some of the colors amazing. Look at this for see. I another thing I like about these and I like about the Conte chalks is that uh, I could buy these separately. So if I, you know, broke artists and everything, yeah, <laughs> um, if I only had like a couple of quid on me, I could still buy like a pencil a week, you know, and get the colors I want rather than buying. A set of pencils that come with four or five colors I really don't want, you know, um, and then these ones having the watercolor effect as well. So you can see how if I was doing a head, right, and I'm wanting to cover that much space, instead of having to shade everything very carefully, I can just come along and do that and get my skin color straight away. So it's really nice, and it's it for somebody like me that isn't as good with watercolor as I would be with acrylics, or now finding out a uh, jelly gouache suit me really well as well, and I really like them. Um, these pencils are wonderful, and you can also uh, put the water down first and draw into them, or you can just use it completely like a pencil, you know, and. This was the way we were doing our heads. If you remember, we had the down middle job. We had the eyes halfway down. Ovals for the eyes, finding the center of the nose. Line on either side of that for the nose. Three quarters of the way down, bottom of the nose. And the mouth, you see. And it's usually kind of halfway out. Different people are different sizes. And, you know, like Hockney. If you look at the photo that I had on the community tab, um, he, his uh, jowls and everything or his jawline would go out further. So he'd he'd be a squarer version of this, you see. But you can still start off on the same thing. So I won't be doing all watercolour for the whole thing. I'm just showing you what they can do and showing you some of the colours. And some of the kind of colours... Um, that you would use for portrait drawing with pencil. And this is why it's handy being able to buy pencils separately because 
you know, you could see those colours possibly being in a, in a set. There's sometimes you get a kind of an, a, a rosy colour, skin colour in a set. But how often do you see a colour like that in um in a set? You know, not that often. But that is a wonderful skin colour. It goes a lot greener when it's watered. But it's actually a grey green. Uh, which is it's kind of um it's actually kind of an olive green, somewhere between olive and a terra verde green. But that is a really nice skin color, you see. So that was obviously why I wanted to buy that one. We used to have millions of these. Uh, some of them are um in different parts around the house. But what else have we got? You see, I've got a lot of greens and a few blues. So. We'll go through what I have and I'll talk to you while I'm pairing pencils and showing you what kind of colours I have. See, this kind of, this is a warmer green that I probably wouldn't get as much use out of for the the face. But uh, I might use that for the reference photo of Hockney. He was in this lime green kind of top. So that might be handy for that. Yeah, and it stays very, very warm uh, colour. It's actually a slightly cooler colour, that lime green, but we're not matching it exactly because I don't have exact matches for colours. I have a, a different green there. So I obviously bought a lot of greens because I was doing a lot of landscape with these as well. These are also very handy for bringing out into the landscape. But that kind of green there, I would use that kind of green a lot in a portrait because around people's eyes and things you can get those kind of greens it depends on the lighting of that particular portrait but so let's um just start into the portrait of Hockney because i only have an hour here on this um so i want to get something done and i want to i'm hoping that i do have a blue around somewhere yeah, I have a Caron Dash blue, and I'm not sure if that's a watercolour or not. It feels like a watercolour. These are quite a soft artist quality pencil. I think that is a watercolour. I'm actually not sure whether that's a watercolour or not. I think it is. It's gone very grey. Might be. Not sure. It behaves totally different to those. Those are obviously, if that's a watercolour, Derwent is the superior brand there. Um, so let's just start drawing. This is not a very big sketch pad to do this in, but uh, it's practice. So I, I might be flicking through pages like mad, I don't know. So where did I put my dark colour? You've got a choice, you see. You can um, do the blocking in with a pale pink or a darker colour. But be aware that with your, um, just to prove a point to you, with these, uh, just in case you didn't know this, try rubbing them out. They don't really rub out, okay? So this is kind of higher slopes stuff we're doing today. <laughs> uh, working with pencils because I'm assuming that you have a little bit of confidence after looking at the other two live streams that I did. Um, the Not the last one, which was Jelly Gouache, the bonus live stream, but the live stream one and two of portraits, right? Because we built up loads of confidence in drawing and shading and everything and seeing things in 3D and did loads of practice exercises and everything. So I'm sort of going to assume... Well, okay, you've got a little bit of confidence from all that um, if you were a newbie, right? But, you know, even as a newbie coming in now, uh, it's all just attitude. So <laughs> we'll, we'll just have a good attitude, yeah, and we'll be fine. So grab yourself a pencil that's either a pinky one or a kind of an earth colour one or even a very pale blue would do or a green. You're... Um, sort of stuck for choice in coloured pencils because we can be a little bit expressive and not um, worry about getting things 
too exact. We're still going to think about getting things in the right place, gentlemen. Okay? So we're not going to leave exactitude behind because we're trying to learn to uh, to um, portraits. And portraits have this thing of, well, they've got to look a bit like the person, haven't they? So we'll start off with our egg. Now, if I can't rub any of this out, you're going to do it fairly lightly. So the, the light way of holding the pencil, which I actually showed you, and everything, um, that it just rests there. And then the thumb and the index finger are just stabilizers, really, instead of kind of a claw thing. That makes all this muscle down here uh, very tight. This is just a suggestion, you know. You might even work in the other way for years pretty happily. But if you can tolerate holding a pencil like that, it means your wrist and everything is a lot looser. And your fingers, you see, look, the fingers can move very easily this way. And there's another way of holding the pencil like that as well that people use. Um, I don't use it that often. but So we don't worry about we have uh, extra lines outside. This is sketching folks now mr hockney if we look at our reference material which is a photo and photos taken from a video and the reason i've linked to the video as well is not just that you can see mr hockney's face from the side as well to check um what depths things are but also that you can see his art in that in that video and you can see uh, some coloured pencils here as well. So I've, I've included all those links underneath and then over in the community tab as well. You can find stuff. So this is what you do as a student of art. You want to find stuff out, don't you? So, you know, I'm a student of art as well. So weird noises. Must be building or something going on. So Mr. Hockney likes roundy glasses, and we love this because we haven't had a chance yet to do anybody with glasses on, have we? So glasses create such weird noise. I don't know what it is. Some sort of some building. I hope you can't hear it because it is very distracting to me. So we have our nose roughly marked in and our mouth. Now, uh, he isn't quite, he actually isn't quite head on. I'm just making them head on. Really, I should have maybe had this line over. Oh, well, I can change. I'm not going to worry. It just means moving the glasses. So that is a three quarters peel. And sketching is about this slight looseness, okay? So we're not worried about all the extra lines and we're not going to go up the face um you know we're we're keeping nice and fluid i always put in the ears very early and line them up halfway down for the starting point and bring them down um with mr hockney to go down to almost the mouth so we've already got some things placed because it's three quarters here. You can only really see the tip of the other ear. But there's something about putting ears in that um, makes the whole thing uh, seem like a head. <laughs> I don't know what to me. It does. Now I have a black as well, and I am going to get daring with my black pencil here. And do that lovely shadow under the hat. Okay. And uh, so it's, we're against a blue, very pale blue background here. So instead of continuing on with the black, I'm choosing to bring a blue around here. Because uh, I want to indicate his head shape. And... At the moment, it looks too uh, heart-shaped, right? But that's all going to change because the oval is just the thing you're building on to do this. And I still have the blue because if you look at the reference photo, underneath his chin, is kind of a, it's actually a mixture and there is a little trick that uh, when we're painting something, we'll um, be using that trick more often. 
and you know we'll do a part we'll do a portrait painting live uh sometime if you want but we're just we're going to change tack next week on this bit and do some Ghibli inspired painting with those jelly gouache um because you can spend too long on something and everybody gets fed up I tend to not get fed up too fast to be honest with you but um you know, you don't want to be on portrait painting forever. You want to bounce around a little bit, have fun with other things, then come back to it, you know. So we will be, I'm putting in my irises of the eyes um, early. A lot of people don't do that because it gives a very comical look. And they go, oh, no, I don't want the thing to look silly. Don't worry about that. There's a stage that a painting can go through or just or a drawing. Where it can look very silly. That's it's okay to have silly stages. It doesn't mean you're trying to stop silly. So yeah, we will do a little painting sometime. And you know, you might have seen it in 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 other things I did. I don't think it's particularly obvious in the portrait painting that uh, I'm doing on the latest video upload. But you know, there is a time lapse of me painting portrait, but. There's a trick you can do when you're getting the underneath the sh shadow that if you can't decide exactly what color it is, um, that's probably because it's a mixture of warm light and cool light. And um, cool and warm color to be exact, right? So let's say you have this kind of, that's a warm color, isn't it, right? So if we do a blue over that, blue is cool, isn't it? So what color is this thing now, you see? It's kind of a, your eye mixes it. Uh, and if, it, if we were going to paint, it would mix it differently. But it does give the impression, if you go back from the thing, look at it a little bit, of that under the chin sort of area. And then we can come in and modify it and add different colors. And everything. So that is one way of getting those shadows when you can't decide on the color. And uh, part of the reason I picked Hockney for this was uh, his color drawings. And I think I've given you the link there to um, the drawings of, we're in that video of Celia right, from the 70s, he, a sitter that he had sit from quite uh, frequently, I think a friend of his, and um, he drew her in pencils. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're a bit stuck up about pencils, we kind of go, oh, that's a kid's medium, you know. Uh, it isn't really, and even kids' pencils, you can still get, what is this? Oh, that's a blue one. Yeah. These are so dirty and being so old. I can't tell what half of them are. What colour was I looking for? Uh, I'm going to go in here with this warm kind of sienna colour. So I have actually marked, you know, the whereabouts of the glasses. Uh, his hat might have come down low of the glasses, bigger one or the other. I have to make decisions here. Where's my black going? Was that it there? I have a, yeah, I have this dark brown that's very, it's actually a, when you wet it, look at how red it is. It's a beautiful colour, but uh, it ain't the colour I was looking for. So I'm going to leave that up there and look for my black again. Here we are. Uh, I'm going to go slightly bigger with the glasses because I have decided that this is more or less in the right place, but he doesn't have acres of forehead here. So you see how I'm working? I'm um, saving the kind of, you know, the really dark colors for where, when I'm sure about where they go. But I know that the glasses are round and I know the distance between uh, one side and the other. OK, so I, ha I do have some info. I just have to. So the glasses, his glasses actually make life a bit easier. Some people's glasses don't. But the one thing that isn't easy about them is 
you have to handle the shape of the glasses, which has no, no problem doing a circle. We can all probably manage a circle one way or the other. But you have to handle the eye behind it as well. So, you know, there's more info going on. And that black is uh, pretty dark all the around. And I'm not like being super careful about being in the black perfectly because I like this little, I call it evidence of drawing. You can tell it's a drawing. You know? It's not trying to be perfect or anything. But we're very sure about the position of glasses. So we've made a huge decision there because I can't move that anyway now because I can't rub it out can I um it's colored pencil won't move out so we're stuck with that folks so where's that carmine that I had I like that carmine for this here and a bit of the eyebrow because they're quite dark as well and to decide on those colors I'm um Looking at one spot in the face and comparing it to other spots in the face, color wise. And some of the carmine is going to go in here as well. I'm going to widen his face and modify the ear so it goes out a bit further. So it's starting to have more of his kind of square. Now I'm going to get this nice rose color we had and start doing things over here. Now, these kind of areas on the face, I've looked at the video, okay? So I did have some questions about planes and things on them, which I had to go to the video to look at them from the side to see. So I, I kind of know a few distances and things. I might get some things wrong because I'm kind of lashing along here, but, you know. In a way, sometimes working fast is good. And if you're in a life drawing class, you quite often do. I liked the longer poses personally, but they'll quite often do short poses and they were very popular because uh, <laughs> because if anything went wrong uh, with the drawing um, or whatever medium somebody was working with, it was only going to go wrong for 20 minutes, wasn't it? You know, and they didn't have to sit there struggling to fix it, which I think is a bit of a cop out personally, because I think the struggle is very good for you, trying to struggle to fix something. Uh, but, there, you know, obviously there's the stage and with pencils and everything, it's only so much fixing you can do because you can't rub out the way you can with ordinary pencil. And I've lost my carmine again, which I had my hand not two seconds ago. Uh, where did it go? So, uh, yeah, I like this paper so far. I like cream co colored paper. So I had seen somebody else using this in a video and I thought that looks like good paper. I think I'd like that. That's how I got, there's my carmine. That's how I got the recommendation for that paper. Sorry, I'm pausing because I'm trying to keep a point on these. I like a good point on things when I'm drawing. Okay. Uh, I don't have a huge amount of info uh, about his eyes yet. I'm not going to zoom in. But he has this, um, this way it's interesting, drawn different people. He has these kind of apple-shaped cheeks and he's smiling. So he's got the apple over his cheek, that muscle there, activated. It's tightened. So basically that muscle is coming from the side of his nose there, which I'm putting in, in this deep carmine color. And there's always that kind of crease, isn't there? And um, sometimes that gets deeper when you're older. And in the portrait that we have of this lady, it did sit well, you can see that it carries on down here and often there are muscles that kind of start um, pulling down a little bit with gravity as you age, where things get sort of muscles get a bit slacker as you age. And age is an interesting thing because uh, David Hockney, his energy 
in his 80s. Oh, oh. Unbelievable, really, because um, he was out doing uh, gigantic landscapes. I love his, his work so much. He did huge kind of one whole wall of a room size landscapes. Oh, I have somebody in chat. I'm ignoring. Sorry. Oh, it's really clear. Hiya. Um, we're doing uh, Hockney today in pencils. So um, I was just talking about his work and why I like it so much. I'm, and I'm going to do Big Shadow down here that's cast by the glasses. If you're wondering what the heck this is, this is the nice thing about glasses. You can get all sorts of interesting cast shadows. So, uh, yeah, the energy of the man, something else for a guy that uh, elderly, you know, to be able to uh, leap around <laughs> practically. Um, it's a very energetic thing working on a very big canvas, you know, and not only that, but um, he was working outside now, you know, very, very well moneyed artist, I suppose, from having so much success in his career. But um, he would have had assistant, uh, assistance when he's out in the field, but it still be dreadfully tiring and stuff, you know, but um, he's very... Um, interested you know in everything and this is what i like about his work and i like that for today's purpose right he's great to be doing a portrait show because not just an interesting face but um and a very different face from the other faces we've been doing so far i was trying to pick models that are all very different you know um but also um his work uh you know i'd love people to go and have a look at his work and see if you think it's amazing um an artist that i think he'd be comfortable himself somebody say no oh, do you know who he reminds me of a little bit um would be uh van gogh sorry would you believe it i'm looking for this carmine again i don't know why i keep losing these they're all a very dark color pencil so i get them mixed up the color is up here on the tip, but the carmine one looks like black. So I keep losing. There it is. Look at that. Does not look like a carmine to me. A carmine is a red color. So, uh, yeah, his Annie. If you look at David Hockney on YouTube, like even just the video I gave you, or any of the other many videos that come up, there are loads of really good videos on him. You'll start noticing that he lo he loves drawing and he's really good at drawing right and the way he draws is it's kind of constructed in the way van gogh constructs his drawing and van gogh when he started drawing he didn't really know how to draw he taught himself how to draw but he came became very good at drawing from just practice, 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 and being brutally honest with himself about when something kind of locked together well and when it didn't and why it wasn't working and everything. And he sort of, um, you know, put a lot of time into into thinking about it as well as drawing all the time, you know. And, you know, people like his letters to his brother and everything about art. I never read them myself, but... So uh, Hockney is, is quite like Van Gogh in that locked together quality that his drawings have of everything in its right place and a kind of solidity to his drawings as well. That um, when a drawing is, is very accurate, right, there, it has this locked in look about it where you've just locked down the position of things and the planes of things. And um, Hockney, is, or you will always learn something by looking at Hockney's drawings. And his paintings have it as well, because, of course, drawing is the basis of good painting. You know, you've got to have your drawing skills with the paint, but you've got to have some kind of basic drawing down if you're doing, you know, um, non-abstract kind of painting now he has a kind of a slightly flat nose and you would be surprised if you're going to use this for 
reference, you will be surprised by the planes of his nose in relation to his chin, how flat the whole thing is <laughs> when you um look at him from the side. You know, which you might you might need to do. I'm just sort of encouraging you to bear in mind that when you have a sitter, you often look at them from various different ways and um directions. Sorry, I can't draw and think. So uh yeah, so look at the, specifically for pencil ones, look at the drawings of Celia from the 70s. And there are some drawings of Celia, 70s drawings of Celia, as far as I can remember, in the documentary that I linked you up to there. As well as some paintings. He did uh, a wedding portrait for Celia. And that's... One of my favorite pieces, actually, I think it's in the Tate, and it's such a beautiful piece. I was so excited about going to see it. Now, that's starting to look like him. I feel he has this quality that I don't like to uh, generalize about people like they're a caricature or anything, but it does start emerging after a while that he has this quality of beady eyedness, <laughs> like some sort of big bird or something. Um, because he's very solid. He's a very solid, wide kind of a guy. Um, but the, the beadiness of him, he's got kind of, Castle had it as well, those very dark, beady eyes. And so if you get the eyes right on this guy, you're kind of a lot of the way there. And He used to have this dyed blonde hair when he was younger that was kind of, it was very Andy Warhol-ish inspired looking job, but he's a white-haired guy now. And we've, we've painted, uh, we've drawn, we've drawn two people now with hats on. So um, lots of painters actually like painting people with the crop of having a hat on. Because it's, it's just interesting. It just adds different elements to things, doesn't it? And uh, then we'll come down and we'll do the shirt. And then we're ready for the... So this is kind of... It's kind of a homage to David Hockney. It's, it's not... This is very much done in my style. But uh, when I started really enjoying using these pencils, I found David Hockney's work. And I went, well, that's not unlike the way my approach is with the pencils and everything. And he likes doing the same kinds of things and everything, you know. So um, it's it's kind of a not filling in all the areas kind of approach. I would have preferred to have the edge of the hat over here, maybe. Because it just doesn't know that's better. See, I can't really correct, can I? Uh, so, like, stuff like those lines, look at their, well, they are, uh, that one is rubbing out, okay. That one rubs out. Why does that one rub out and the other ones don't? It's a different brand, uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it just depends on how light you have the, how light you have the line. But, like, don't be shy about things and don't be worried about having lines left over. Now, he barely has a uh, bottom lip. Hardly any bottom lip at all <laughs> to speak of. And um, you'll understand why when you see from the side. So this is why I'm saying to you, go and look at the documentary anyway, because it's very entertaining and you learn a lot. And those portrait portraits of Celia, you'll just go, wow, they're they're terrific. And then you'll get really into him and you'll be off looking at his landscapes. You'll see, you'll thank me. So there we are. I'm, li I'm liking this so far. So if I had a lovely deep blue, which I do, and this is a different brand. This is Albrecht Dürer, Faber Castell. Faber Castell and an okay brand as well. So if you had ordinary, um, ordinary, pencils as opposed to this sort of watercolour pencils um, 
Faber Castell ones are excellent. I don't know how you are on on uh my my Cheshire in chat there. I don't know how you are on on pencils whether you ever do work in pencil at all. But see, I hop around from one medium to another all the time because I find it uh, very inspiring to do that. And I used to do that even with the life drawing classes. I used to do that all the time. That's why I, although I really like pencils, I maybe every third week or so, I might say, eh, well, in the mood for Conte chalks today. And it was just a kind of um, a freshening up kind of device you know that i did it so i am looking for uh, i have the blue right but i um, i don't have exactly the green i want i could cheat and i could come in with my gouaches or you know some yeah that's an okay color for sure or some um acrylics or something if i wanted to but i don't really want to cheat I'm cheating as much as I want to cheat because of the fact these are watercolour pencils. I haven't done anything watercolour with them yet, you'll notice. I don't know if I even want to. I might, might with the background or something, I'm not sure. But uh, it's nice that you have choices with these things. So his, his top, although pattern can be quite tricky to do, this is just a stripe top, so this is quite nice to do. And I'm leaving a little line to put in our green, okay? And he he's dressed in a very sort of loud pattern, but he has a wonderful sense of pattern of himself, and you will notice this in his drawings and his paintings. He likes a couple of different things. Um, not only is he a strong, uh, very strong at drawing, but he loves colour and very, very vibrant colour. And he even introduces really vibrant colours into landscape in a very, um, he manages to do it in a very um, convincing, naturalistic way, even though some of the colours you go, wow, that's a bit more vibrant than nature actually is. It's still convincing. So he's very, he gives off this very, very contemporary feeling. He is, though, very groundbreaking as art is, you know. It's very, it's very unique in him, but very easy to get into, you know. Because, um, do you remember I said when I got that paint set, I said, you know, our eyes are having a party just looking at the colours. Well, his stuff is like that. Your eyes have a party looking at the colours. Yeah, I might introduce some watercolour into this. So we'll we'll just uh... now you see I'm not even worried about the direction of my shading. I'm making that a feature with the drawing, this nice energetic -y shading, you know. I like that about it. It's a feature of the whole thing. And if I get my act together I might be able to find some I don't have a green like that but I might be able to find something that works that's near that seems to be the nearest kind of thing I have it's not great but I might be able to mix it with that pale blue and get something I don't know okay and I go back in here with uh, if I ever find the black again <laughs> I've lost it again. It's unbelievable. How do I how do I lose these so easily? And you see you lose every time you lose a pencil. Um you've lost pre precious seconds as well. There it is. Where's that the carmine? Heavy black. The tip looks exactly like the carmine. I just want to make more of a thing of this shirt. You see those little those little things make the difference. That's making the difference between really cementing a picture down. A lot of people do this kind of outlining things. They do an outline around things, which is meant to do that. It's meant to make the image kind of pop out at you. Um, I don't do it that much because I don't always want that kind of graphic designy 
look to things. I, I, you know, I want to maybe keep them more naturalistic. But uh, hopefully people will find this kind of exciting doing something that has uh, somebody that has glasses on. There we go. So let's try and do our... Uh, still messing with the hat, aren't I? <laughs> I don't know why I keep messing with that. So let's try and do some of the watercolour -y bit of it. But I'm also uh, trying to work with edges of face and things like that to really cement down that shape. And things like getting the collar sitting right, uh, the neck sitting right in the collar and getting a couple of accents of really black, black gone. And I have done so little with the eyes here. They're really just suggested with um, that uh, with the black uh, you know, eyeballs and just black irises and that's it because I wanted to keep that uh, you know peeping out at you kind of look going um, so the glasses were doing a lot of work there you see so I'm going to come down the neck and sometimes you do you want to have a little look at what's going on down here as well oh the flipping carmine colour I need again the difference between them. I, I should really if I was using them more often I would do this I would stick a little piece of tape or something that's a red colour on one just to remind me but don't use them often enough to know what the tape would signify if I did it okay. so here's the carmine and they're you know they give off quite a different vibe you know if you get it wrong and I want some blue going in here because you see, that does receive some blue from over here. And he's not as pink as that, but the carmine is, is isn't it, you know, isn't the colour I particularly want either. For that, but I do want it for over here. I'm going to use that with the rose in the middle. There's that rose going on there. there. Sorry, I always end up shaking the camera when I do that. <laughs> And the other bit that I think is a good uh, thing for lightness is that little corner of the mouth shape can be very different on different people. And I'm going to do a little zoom in for a second just to get a bit more detail because I was looking at this quite um, small. And I want to go in and get that center line of the mouth better. Because it swoops down, it's not straight all the way across, and that helps a bit. Okay, so and he's got a little knobby um, Adam's apple. All righty, so we've gotten somewhere. Let's see what the watercolour pencils can do when you start. Um, playing about a bit with them, okay? And this is something to love about watercolour pencils. Uh, I just have a, a very a roundy brush that's not, not very small or anything. Oh, you used to make greeting cards with coloured pencils. Yeah, they'd be perfect for that. If you had um, 
nice bit of, you know, maybe something a bit thicker than that um, turned over and you do a drawing. Of it. Yeah, perfect. And, uh, you know, it'll look, it, it, it would look fabulous. I bet it'd look great because uh, people are sometimes a bit brainwashed about handmade things that they think, ah, Yes, I have to buy something for somebody. They'll expect something bought. No, the people don't expect something bought. People know. Oh, I don't have my green in. I don't have to get green in for doing anything. Uh, I would go with that green with the acrylic, but it is a drawing live stream, so I won't. I will resist, resist, and try and find a green. Somewhere. Ah, I have one. Um. Tiny um, do I have a yellow? Yeah, so like, um, people know that you spent time doing something. Like, you imagine, like, you know, imagine this is Uncle Joe or something, you know. I've done a portrait of Uncle Joe, spent ages doing it, um, made it into a nice greeting card and a uh, handwritten message. Who wouldn't love that, you know? More than a bought card. Um, I don't know. I don't know why you would not prefer that, personally. But there, then, see, I'm an artist. <laughs> um, I think. Do you know what I think it is? I think people say, oh, "I think I'm cheap." <laughs> He'll think I'm cheap that I didn't buy him something. You know. Uh, well, uh, he'd be an idiot if he thought that would dump him, Uncle Joe, who's the sort of uncle that thinks like that. <laughs> well, maybe don't dump him. <laughs> you might not have those options. How are we doing time-wise? Oh, my God, 101. One hour and one minute. So we'll just get our watercolour fully activated here and uh, down out. I would like the yellow for that, but I cannot find the yellow for the black. All I suppose I could cheat slightly and put felt pen on. Why not? Oh, I'll use these pens, will I? The watercolour pens. I want an acidic, an acidic yellow over that. In fact, I have an acidic green. At least I'm still drawing. And um, that was a cheap set too. I liked that set. These are the watercolour, um, the watercolour jewel pens. They're a nice little skinny side and a big side. See, I wanted to do most of this in just pencil though. So now we have are uh, activating the watercolour thing, which I'm just going to do on parts of it. I'm not going to do it on the whole thing. And uh, I like this because um, you see the way you still see the drawing mark and you can still mess around with it afterwards and still draw on it afterwards. I'm not going to do it up further. It's, I don't like it. I don't like it to over, overdone. But I want to pick up a little tiny bit of that blue there and do things with the blue. Modify a few bits. And then I want to do things with the background. Or Mr. Hockney. So, yeah, uh, if you have spare few minutes, have a look at the documentary and see how well Mr. Hockney draws. Because uh, his stuff is amazing. So, there we are. There's coloured pencils. And um, next um, Friday... It is going to be a painting clouds session. 
which we have done a painting cloud session before, but with my new set of jelly gouache, uh, I'm really looking forward to this session because it is a Studio Ghibli inspired session of uh, clouds that are provided by the Studio Ghibli people who have allowed artists to work uh, from some of their images just for practice, like, you know, people who are fans of Ghibli films, but some of the landscape painting for those CGI films um, is so nice, very painterly and everything. And uh, the image that I, I um, have for our reference image is a, whoops, sorry, a very nice uh, image in terms of colour. So next week, in other words, is all about colour and it's painting. So whatever paints that you want to use, you know, uh, just get the paints out and you'll just do a little bit of painting and um, explore uh, colour in clouds just using just this one reference that we have uh, as a kind of a starting point for exploring colour in clouds because they're, you know, you can have maybe pink or blue sky and white clouds and that's just generalization isn't it uh, and it is handy to have starting points to go off in new directions sometimes like buying the new set of paints with the new colors in it sent me off in that direction um and that is different kinds of colors than i would normally use some things you know so that's like three quarters of the way finished i'd just be tipping around possibly but I, i'll post up the picture of that as well on the community tab. so um color yeah we love color so we saw how drawing was the basis of being able to get something starting to look like somebody you know uh, and then we saw how you can work up from that to um, get nearer likenesses to people. And don't be afraid to do different kinds of faces all the time. And you will get better at portraiture. And different media as well help get you better at things. Because you're chopping and changing. And it's all getting your, you're used to different motor skills. And using different media in the best way for that media. Okay. So I hope you had fun. I had fun and I'll see you again soon. And that will be on Friday, unless, you know, something else exciting happened. I, I like my new sketch pad. It always seems successful enough. It's not dry yet, so I can't judge. Well, it's definitely a better quality than the other one I was working on, you know. I might not have to skip pages in between when I go on to the next thing. So that's the story, folks. Next Friday. Uh, you look out for shorts and things in the meantime, and um, I'll keep you updated on the community tab. And thanks for dropping by. Take care.